Uh, thank you, Amy, and uh, good morning and welcome to all of you to the uh, Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, uh, or the OCC for short. Um, I'm very excited to have you here today for what I expect will be a, a lively discussion. When we released our white paper on innovation in March, one of our goals was to engage stakeholders in a meaningful conversation. I think we accomplished that, evidenced by the number of thoughtful comment letters that we received on our white paper and the fact that this forum sold out within 36 hours. That's not quite as quickly as uh, Hamilton, the Broadway hit, <laughs> but still a hot ticket in this town uh, nonetheless. I am glad that all of you made it and that you could be part of our discussion. After all, we are here to learn from you and to exchange thoughts and ideas. Today's event features some of uh, important voices in the financial industry, as Amy mentioned, bankers, non-bank innovators, consumer and community activists, academics, uh, investors, and regulators. All of them are here today to talk about the promise and challenges of financial innovation and its impact on the federal banking system. I encourage you to take full advantage of this opportunity to interact with the panelists and with one another. In important ways, we are in this together. If you look at today's agenda, you'll see that I'm scheduled to speak for 45 minutes, but I hope that I certainly won't take up that much time, and I really am far more interested in a dialogue. So I want to leave uh, some ample time for your questions. But before we get to that, I do want to share the perspective on responsible innovation that I've developed over three decades as a bank regulator. Part of that perspective is recognizing that innovation has always been an integral part of the banking system. It comes in waves, and the particular ingenuity displayed each time feels fresh and pushes us forward. But the process of innovation, adaption, execution, and regulation is not new at all. And what was once revolutionary can, in hindsight, appear quite quaint. Banks met the automobile era of the 20s, 30s, and 40s with drive-up windows, providing greater convenience and mobility. The space age brought ATMs to banks to provide access around the clock and around the world. In the information age, banks delivered a wave of high-tech conveniences, from depositing checks with the snap of a picture to the ability to manage your account entirely online. The arc of innovation has made the federal banking system stronger and served customers better. Financial innovation by banks and non-banks alike has helped people buy homes and build wealth and led to greater financial inclusion. These innovations make our financial system the envy of the world. That's no exaggeration. At the same time, We've seen the need for heightened risk management to keep pace with the rapid changes in technology, products, services, and processes. Greater interconnectivity has been a boon also for cyber criminals, giving them greater opportunity to commit identity theft, phishing schemes, fraud, and other mischief. While responsible professionals and cyber watchdogs prevent many of the attacks from being successful, we read about far too many in the press each day. Still, other so-called financial innovations had unforeseen consequences and led to abuses and dangerous risk in lending and securities, contributing to the Great Recession and resulting in trillions in losses to consumers, businesses, and the U.S. and global economies. That, too, unfortunately, is no exaggeration. That brings me to responsible innovation. What do I mean by those two words? At its simplest, a responsible innovation is one that meets the changing needs of consumers, businesses, and communities, is consistent with sound risk management, and aligns with the company's business strategy. Said another way, responsible innovation within the federal banking system helps institutions achieve their public purpose without compromising safety and soundness, and supports their long-term business goals. As regulators, then, 
We want to encourage and promote advances in products, services, and processes that serve consumers, communities, and businesses better and more fairly. That is a bank's public purpose, and that's why national banks and federal thrifts exist. By the way, that's also how banks compete, deliver more value than the bank on the next block or the next web page. Whether it starts in a bank innovation lab or in a Silicon Valley garage, innovation that helps banks achieve that goal contributes to the vitality of our banking system and makes our financial services sector stronger. At the same time, regulators and industry must guard against any unnecessary risk from creeping into the system. We cannot be idle witnesses to potential harm to consumers, institutions, or the federal banking system as a whole. That's the challenge of our, for our agency and the challenge for all participants and attendees in this room today. This forum is another step in our efforts to make sure we at the OCC are up to that challenge. Our efforts began last summer when we asked how we, as an agency, can adapt to the breakneck pace of banking innovation today and how we can support positive change. We went about answering those questions by conducting dozens of conversations with folks like you. We put the themes and principles that flowed from those conversations into what has become a well-received white paper. The paper describes our perspective on responsible innovation in the banking system. It articulates the principles that, we, that are guiding the development of our framework for identifying and evaluating new and innovative financial products and services. Most importantly, the paper sparked this conversation, and I appreciate all the thoughtful comments we have received. Those comments are helping to inform the discussions you are a part of today and our agency's next steps. This forum is symbolic of the concerted effort of many contributors, some of whom are here today. They are people like Amy Friend, my chief counsel, who was given the responsibility of leading the OC's innovation innovation, and we would not be here today without her leadership and the extraordinary number of hours and thoughtful work put in by the team she assembled from across the agency. Among many others, I should single out Noelle Curtin. Uh, Noelle is chiefly responsible for pulling this terrific uh, event together. Events like these take a great deal of effort and long days and night. Noelle and everyone on the team and in the OCC conference office really deserves our thanks. And interestingly, Noelle is an enforcement attorney, so it shows you that uh, people can do more than one thing. I'd also... <laughs> I'd also like to uh, take this opportunity to introduce you to Kay Cowett. Some of you may know Kay as the OCC's Deputy Comptroller for our Western District. But today, I want to publicly introduce her in a new role, heading the team responsible for turning our principles for responsible innovation into tangible practice. It's no small task to turn a good idea into an operational reality. At the OCC and over the next few months before returning to their day jobs, Kay, her deputy Beth Knickerbocker from our legal division and their team will take your comments today and develop a set of actionable recommendations for implementing our framework for innovation. And that framework will help us identify and evaluate innovation affecting the federal banking system and maintain the active dialogue we have successfully begun. It's a big job, but I have every confidence in Kay and her team. And this forum will go a long way in helping them to crystallize their ideas for implementing a conceptual and organizational framework for innovation at the OCC. As your host, let me give you a short preview of what the day holds for all of us. Uh, we're going to start with a big picture look at innovation in the financial services in industry. And not many people are more familiar with this topic than our moderator of the first panel, Amy Friend. Uh, since I announced this effort in August last year, she has immersed herself in all aspects of innovation. And her panel, I believe, brings some big thinkers from several disciplines together to explore whether fintechs and banks can coexist and what they can learn from each other. 
The panel will also discuss what regulators should do or not do. Next, we'll move to the opportunities and challenges for national banks, federal savings associations, and fintech companies in our business, uh, innovation, business of innovation session. If our opening panel delves into the macro issues of innovation, this panel will deal with more of the nuts and bolts of that process. Kathleen Oldenburg, our moderator for this session, is on the cutting edge of many of these advances as our director for payment systems policy. Uh, I think you'll agree with me that the area of payment systems and processing is the most uh, fertile grounds uh, for innovation today. Among other topics, the panel will discuss real-world successes and failures, the potential for partnerships between banks and fintechs, how banks evaluate risks and develop controls, and how we all should define success. Our third panel will discuss the impact of innovation on consumers and communities. Remember, to be, responsible, innovation, to be responsible, innovation should improve the products and services that customers rely upon. It should help expand financial inclusion. Led by Senior Deputy Comptroller for Compliance and Community Affairs, Gravetta Gardner, this afternoon's panel on responsible innovation in the consumer will focus on understanding how consumer needs are changing and how innovation can expand services for the unbanked and underbanked populations across our country. Finally, we'll wrap up today's discussion with a panel on the OCC's vision for responsible innovation and the principles guiding the development of our innovation framework. Brian Hubbard, our new Deputy Comptroller for Public Affairs, will lead that panel which includes a number of experts from across our agency who helped produce our white paper and who conducted the research and the many conversations that informed our thinking uh, and uh, be, what was behind this event. They'll discuss the feedback that we've received on our paper in more detail and where we are headed, adding a particular perspective from their lines of business within the OCC. As you heard earlier, with an out-of-the-box lunch squeezed in between panels, I think we have a full day planned for everyone, and I hope all of you take away something valuable to you. As I said at the beginning, this forum is about dialogue, so enough with my remarks, and I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. <laughs>